Yeah, so hello. Um, I'm also a medical doctor, and um, the specific, specific um, area I'm um, leading at ADA, how we are called, is um, the creation of the reasoning relevant content, so the medical content behind ADA, but also the more text like content, so all the text we see in our products. Um, which we are translating in all the languages uh, we want to offer this. We are facing a lot of challenges in the healthcare system. Um, one is the increasing demand of information, for information. Patients are um, Googling their symptoms more and more. Currently, um, around 60% before they visit the doctor or afterwards. <laughs> Additionally, the time of doctors is really limited. Um, for example, in Germany, there are, um, in the mean, um, 17 doctor-patient um, consultations a year. That's a lot. And unfortunately, the process when someone, when a patient goes to a doctor, or um, why and how urgent and to whom, um, this is really uncoordinated, uncoordinated in general. And beyond that, the rapid increase of medical knowledge is, um, is really amazing. And, um, oh, we already know over 30,000 diseases we are able to name, and there are 200 publications each day um, which are published, and uh, this, is, um, this is immense, and this cannot, one brain cannot really know everything. That's why Ada built one solution for that. Um, Ada would like to, or Ada is able to provide uh, profound and personalized health information and is offering a symptom assessment for layperson. Um, ad additionally, um, Ada supports the care navigation, so when a patient should go where. Then we offer a clinical decision support system for doctors. This is a software to support doctors in the decision making during the diagnostic process so that in the end this saves the doctor's time. And with this kind of AI technology, we are able to make the knowledge we are gathering during research um, really offer this knowledge to everyone, especially doctors. And ADA's knowledge base consists of thousands of symptoms, findings, and conditions. And we have a big, big team um, of doctors who are improving this knowledge base and continuously updating, looking into user feedback to um, yeah, find areas for improvement. This is how ADA for layperson looks today. Um, you, you can enter symptoms in, into, into ADA, um, one or more complaints, patient health, then Ada is performing a case history, like a pre-anamnesis, and um, at the end, um, Ada is providing a result, um, possible explanations for the symptom, symptom constellation. And um, how Ada works a bit more deeper, with the information patients or users we are saying are providing, um, like age, sex, his, uh, risk factors, but also the entire personal anamnesis, and um, the symptoms, or the complaint, the main complaint they are having, um, together um, with this information, Ada is determining a list of possible conditions. And um, in the background, um, Ada is then thinking about what's the best next question to ask. Depending on the answer of the user, the list of condition probabilities are changing, and the order is changing, and the next question is suggested. That's very important. So there's no decision tree behind. Um, this is really dependent on the answer, but also the information given by the user. And in the end, after um, several cycles of that, around 20 to 40 questions, um, Ada is providing a report um, with an advice what to do next. When we look into the architecture of Ada, ADA was not built based on a specific data set you can find out there because we cannot find the data for such a system somewhere. We need to take everything into account what we can find. Publications, specific data sets, but that's why we have um, chosen a specific um, approach to that. 
Um, our gold standard, we are saying, is to create condition models. This means we are describing in a coding language how often symptoms are present for each condition. And not only the symptoms patients can really um, recognize, it goes beyond that. Also lab findings and histological findings, radiological findings. And um, this is the uh, this is the basic um, model we have, and then we took um, a set of um, clinical real-world cases to see um, how good ADA performs on them and to find areas for improvement to adjust this. And um, the condition models together with the algorithms behind ADA are making the reasoning. And um, one very important thing why we have chosen this architecture is to be transparent. Because when you would have taken a data set, a big data set, where we would try to learn specific patterns, we can only be as good as the data is. And by choosing this method, we are able to explain to the user, to the doctor, but also to the layperson, why we came to specific conclusions or why Ada is thinking like that. This is an example of a, of a user on the, oh, sorry. <coughs> On the left side, um, there are the symptoms which, have, uh, which are present or absent. On the right side, the list of possible explanations. In between, you see contribution lines. And they are green when the symptom is present and red when the symptom is absent. The thicker the line, the stronger the argument for or against the condition. This means, for example, abdominal pain and loss of appetite are strong arguments for an appendicitis, but the absence of vomiting and um, dyspepsia is a strong um, argument because it is absent against um, gastritis. ADA is um, in the medical category of the apps um, all over the world in 100 30 countries um, on top. Um, we already have over 8 million users, over 40 million assessments have been performed. Um, we are available in seven languages, which is a quite advantage in general of our approach because we are able to, um, to perform an assessment, for example, in English, but then show to a doctor or to another layperson um, the same thing in another language so that it is um, very fast ex exchangeable. As um, specifically in the cardiological field, um, it's also interesting to look into children. Um, I um, checked how many assessments had been performed for children, and um, it's currently over 3 million already, um, below the age of 18. One important thing to note here is because of GDPR, we are not allowed, or users are not allowed to use ADA when they are um, younger than 16, but we offer the possibility for parents to perform an assessment um, for their children so that also the questioning is um, adopted to, to their needs. This is an exception of, uh, exception of um, um, some um, user reviews. Um, since two and a half years, we are now um, with this layperson app. Um, out there and it's very motivating as a doctor to read this every day and to see that people are thinking we help them to save their life or we recognize um, some specific conditions or problems much faster than maybe um, someone else in their process had been able to, to recognize this. This is the decision support system for doctors. Um, it looks quite the same or has the same functionality. In the middle, you see um, the working area for a doctor. So this is a, a, a patient, let's say. On the left side, they are able to search for symptoms, but we are also suggesting what kind of next question to ask or what kind of next examination should they do, can they do, or Ada would say it's the uh, most valuable or most information gain to, to do that. And on the right side, you see um, the list of possible conditions um, up here and down here, a list of very well-fitting conditions. This is really important because we also want to highlight rare diseases um, because this is something no one, no one can, all of those thousands of um, rare diseases no one can have in mind. And when, when we combine, or we are able to combine this, um, this means we, um, a patient, a user, is able to perform an assessment in, in the layperson app, and then um, we can, or the, their doctor can see the same thing on the screen of the doctor tool to work with that if, if needed. 
One um, important thing we, um, or another very uh, big advantage of ADA is um, the field of rare diseases. We performed a retrospective validation study uh, at the um, Hannover with Professor Wagner to look into how much earlier we, we would have been able to suggest or highlight that there could be a potential of a rare disease. And um, in two-thirds of the cases, it was the case that there was the potential to, to highlight this much earlier in the diagnostic process, and this is quite promising to see. These are some of our partners we are working with. Um, so our aim is to work together with health insurances, but also um, with um, other providers all over the world. Data security is a very important thing for us. Um, since the beginning, um, we are working with the principle of security by design. So um, during the development of, of the products, uh, we always kept this in mind so that uh, we can meet all these high standards. Our products um, are CE certified. Um, and um, yeah, that's it. Thank you very much.